Ah, the benefits of continuous insulation. I was so warm and cozy in there. Let's go see what it does for the house. I'm here today with Jason Mather. He's come up from La Crosse, Wisconsin, where it must be a little bit warmer because I'm wearing a lot more layers than you are. Of course, in Duluth, we know the value of an extra layer, and it's not just applicable to our clothing, it's applicable to our homes. We are using for our continuous insulation on this house a nail base panel. We're using three and a half inches of EPS foam. It's bonded to a 5 8 inch layer of OSB. Right. This is not structural. Yep. These nail base panels wrap the entire exterior of the house. The stud walls that you see here with the open cavities, they have not been insulated yet. They will still get R21 insulation in between those cavities. I think it's important to point out that without insulation in the wall, this wall is already better insulated than a, a, a conventionally framed house, a conventionally built house right now. You could seal the lid up, not insulate the walls, and this house would perform better than the one next door right away. So the continuous layer of the nail base panel is an R15, and it's a true R15 because it's continuous insulating material without the interruption of the studs. Thermal bridging is what it's technically called, but the net result of that stud framing is that that R21 cavity wall does not perform at R21. It performs at about R17, maybe R18, if you're lucky. The continuous insulation mitigates that thermal bridging. Yes, it does. So what, does the, what is the true R value of this wall? So this wall, if you nominally R21 stud bay plus an R15 continuous insulation, level amounts to what, R36. Mm -hmm. We lose a little bit still from that thermal bridging, but the true R value of this entire wall is give or take R34. And if the true R value of the typical code built R21 cavity wall is really around R17, we have just doubled the insulating value of this home with this extra layer of continuous insulation to the outside of the wall. So nail base panels are something that the commercial roofing industry has been using for decades. You can buy them from roofing distributors. You can also buy them from almost all SIP manufacturers. Why? Because essentially a nail base panel is an IP. It's an IP. Instead of a structural insulated panel, it is an insulated panel. What I like about it is that it's really accessible and Anybody can install this thing. Like it's not a, it's not a difficult assembly. It goes right on the wall. It, it, it it's not a great leap, and it's not a fragile assembly. It doesn't require a lot of technical fiddle faddle. A nail base panel can have about a seven sixteenth or a half inch layer of OSB or plywood on the outside. We went with five eighths inch, and we did that because. Um, I've designed houses with nail base panels as the continuous insulation about a half a dozen times, and maybe about the third time in, one of the builders who, who I regularly work with um, had this to say, two things. Number one, he was finding that the panels were warping mm -hmm. a little bit mm -hmm. with the half inch stress skin on it. And then in order to deal with that, they were pushing really hard trying to straighten out those panels on the wall. The other thing that he didn't care for with the, with the half inch um, OSB was that Depending upon what siding he was using, he was worried that he might be voiding a manufacturer's warranty yeah, with the embedment. And so by moving to the 5 a inch, first of all, he found that his panels were not warping or cupping anymore. And second of all, he was feeling much more confident about the holding capacity of the siding that he was fastening. So we, in this house and in all of, of the houses that we'll build, we are specifying that 5 a inch, which is a standard, that's the other piece. You can get nail base panels with half inch or 5 a inch OSB standard because this is a product that's used by the roofing industry. Using a nail base panel means that when you wrap the house, you can put a weather resistive barrier to the outside of it and um, fasten your siding 
over this. Now, there's sort of one caveat, and this is a reason that we're using metal siding, it's vertically oriented. Caveat. It is a very important caveat. When we add additional insulation to the outside of a structure, we are slowing the ability of that structure to dry out when it gets wet. And I say when intentionally because Every structure wets. Every structure gets wet at some point in time. And this wall assembly can dry both to the interior and to the exterior. We chose metal siding, and we can take a look at it here. And when we use corrugated metal over the top of our water resistive barrier, we don't have to use any kind of a furring strip to create an airspace which is there. That airspace behind the siding, between the siding and that continuous insulation, well really between the siding and the weather resistive barrier, it does two things. It facilitates drainage mm -hmm. when water breaches the siding and gets behind the siding, as it always does. Because we know it does. Yep. That's right. And it facilitates drying. That airspace allows the structure, when it gets wet, whether it's just at the surface of the water resistive barrier um, or it's in, you know, in deeper layers and needs to dry out, that airspace allows that drying. And by using that metal siding, because of the profile of the metal, now we've again eliminated having to go around the house yet another time. That doesn't mean you can't use different siding on these houses. If you wanna use cedar lap siding, if you wanna use um, an engineered siding product, you can do that. But when you're going to use a siding material that doesn't inherently create that gap, you're gonna to want to put furring strips onto the face of the water resistive barrier and then fasten your siding to those furring strips. I, I think your strategy is fantastic. And I think the siding choice, the metal siding choice is better in this specific case. And I don't know why you would choose something else that fits with the strategy. But the most important part of that weather barrier is the house wrap, which we have an opportunity to see right now. So maybe we should go have a look at it. Let's go do that. Yeah. So now we're outside at the Evergreen Pilot House Zero Net Energy Home. We were just talking about the importance of the continuous insulation layer. And it's kind of funny because we can't see the nail based panels, but they're here under the weather resistive barrier. If you didn't know there were nail based panels on this house, though, you might just think this was a standard two by six stud wall because you can see the OSB layer. But this is the 5 8 inch OSB that is bonded to three and a half inches of EPS foam. We have a great detail here on the corner I'm that unfortunately we that, can't, that, that I we can't see, it's nice. taped, yeah. So this is taped. Uh, our builder is using a diagonal cut at these panels. These panels are about four and one eighth inches wide and at both when, when the panels meet each other at the corner, you've got a couple of different options. One that I had seen a bunch of builders do, which is fiddly, yep. you cut away the EPS foam about four inches in so that the OSB layer can span across and you seal them together. Yep. But That's okay. a few years ago, a builder I was working with, with an even thicker nail base panel, he just cut it at a miter 45 each of them. So these nail base panels are actually mitered. And then there is continuous um, sip sealer in between that mitered corner. We can take a look at it in the drawing. And I don't know if you can see it here. I can't quite get it up you where the, screws. I can see the screw right here. So I'm about five inches in from the corner and here's the screw. We know it's going into solid framing. Yep. And at the corner, they've gone ahead and taped this. I don't know that you needed to, but it's not gonna hurt anything, taping it up. And yeah, the- Like buck and a half worth of tape on that corner, no big right. deal. So one thing that was important with the nail base panels, they're sitting on top of an ICF foundation wall, an insulated concrete form. And as we all know, the, the bottom of things may not be perfectly level, and we want that thermal continuity, we wanted the nail base panel, um, mm -hmm. the thermal performance of it, that con continuous insulation layer to join the continuous insulation layer of the ICF. What we chose to do was have the builder, and you can't really see it anymore, it's covered by the, the flashing which has been put on um, to protect the foundation, but we can show it in the drawings. This nail base panel, when you start your insulation, or start your installation of the panels, we intentionally had them hold up the panel 
anywhere between about three eighths and a half an inch above the level of the ICF so they could set things level, get everything installed, then they came back with a can of two-part urethane minimally expanding foam, kind of like the same stuff you would use in the gap when you install right. your windows. Right. And they came in and they filled that gap mm -hmm. for thermal continuity. It's not there for an air barrier, but rather than risk that the panels were not going to sit perfectly on top of the ICF, yep. if you had a really tiny gap, it would be hard to fill that. But with an intentional 3 eighths to a half inch gap, they could install that minimally expanded. That's a good strategy because um, people that have built with ICFs and SIPs, this is like a SIP, um, with, with, with that combination, that joint is actually really tricky. Um, that's a nice solution for that problem. I think that an awful lot, when we're talking about management of water, heat, and air, transitions where two dissimilar materials meet or where something turns a corner, that where there's a change in plane or a change in material or a joint or a seam, those are always going to be the areas where you need to pay the most attention. When you finish wrapping the house with the nail base panels, it's almost like now you're looking at a plane that you would have if you had just built a stud wall and sheathed your stud wall with OSB, which would meet code, and you're ready to go and install your windows and put on your water resistive barrier and deal with your flashing, it's no different if you've used a nail base panel. And I think that's one of the merits of using this material for continuous insulation. I will say, and I need to acknowledge that one of the drawbacks is yes, this is a petroleum product. Is this what we should be using long-term? Maybe not. But today, right now, if we wanna consider an effective, um, readily available product, I think this is a great way to go. I can't think of a better use for petroleum products than making insulation out of it. I mean, <laughs> in, in, term, in, in terms of what's good for the planet, it's a pretty good application. Yeah. One thing I love about this product uh, and this strategy in general is, is the, the process of discovery is a lot shorter. Like this is not a difficult to approach material. We know how to run a big screw. We know how to hold a thing up and put it on a wall. That's not, that is not a new thing when a lot of the other very good strategies that you could use for continuous insulation does have a higher um, entry of discovery. Like it, it, it takes some learning as you're using the product to get used to it. This doesn't really have a lot of that. This is a pretty simple thing to, to mess with. Heck yeah. This is like winter camping. I got this. I can push the front one down. I can push them all down. Okay.